Welcome. In this video, I would like to describe how I use Evernote as my primary digital note-taking tool. Sometimes I um, prefer to type my notes because I can type faster than I can handwrite. Other times I prefer to take notes using one of my handwriting applications on my iPad. All of that data can be stored within Evernote and then accessed on any of my devices, my computers, my iPads, my iPhone, as well as through a web interface, such as um, I sometimes have to use when I'm using a university-supplied computer at the lectern. Evernote has given me the flexibility to collect both personal, household-related, files and notes, as well as my professional work in a single location that is automatically synchronized to all of my devices. I'm displaying a page from the Evernote.com website. There is a free subscription to the Evernote application. And this, at the free level, most college students will find that they are not limited by the space restrictions that are available under the free plan. The current limit as of June 2022 is 60 megabytes of data per month uploaded to the Evernote account. Every month you will be uh, allowed 60 more megabytes of data. So, um, but any unused space during a given month is not carried over to the next month. So, for example, in the first month, if you were to upload 10 megabytes worth of data, the remaining 50 megabytes of your space allocation is not rolled over to the second month. Every month you get 60 megabytes worth of upload space. That's probably more than enough for a college student. A typical Adobe PDF file downloaded from Google Scholar or um, the university library is probably in the range of a quarter to um, a third of a megabyte in size. So you can comfortably upload a few hundred Adobe PDF files. When it comes to handwritten notes, 60, it's hard for me to estimate, but a quick guess is you're, we're talking in the range of a few thousand pages of handwritten notes. Um, will easily fit within 60 megabytes of allocated space. If you're a graduate student, particularly if you're pursuing a PhD, you may want to keep copies of the research documents that you read in both Zotero and in Evernote. It's as if you're creating your own backup of all your research material. In that case, you could easily read 40 or 50 articles a week and exceed the 60 megabyte monthly upload allotment of the free account. And you might have to upgrade to a personal account for $69.99 per year or pay it monthly at $7.99 US. And again, even if you move from the personal account and then later switch down to a free account, you don't lose the files that you've already uploaded. You just lose the ability to um, have the elevated or the increased storage capacity for each new month. I've returned to the Evernote application and I would like to demonstrate how easy it is to drag and drop a digital file into a note. 
Here, I have a copy of a Adobe PDF file. I can drag and drop it into the note within my Evernote notebook. And I have full access to all pages of this Adobe PDF file. This note now, along with the Adobe PDF file, is automatically synchronized to all my other devices on which I have installed Evernote and have configured to use the same account. If I wish to delete a the PDF file, I simply click on it and I'm on a MacBook, so for me it's the delete key. On a Windows computer, um, I think I remember both the delete and the backspace key will remove a um, file from the note. If I were in a meeting and typing my notes rather than handwriting them, it's possible for me to just type and then use the save command. On my Mac, it's Command S. On a Windows computer, Control S. This automatically saves the document not just on my local drive, but also synchronizes the changes to the note to my cloud-based Evernote account, thereby making the saved change immediately available on all my other um, subscribed devices. I encourage all students to take careful notes, both in class and when conducting private research. If you prefer to take your notes in a traditional method using a pen or pencil and um, paper, and I've seen many students in class taking notes using a number of colored highlighter markers as well as um, a ballpoint pen. Make digital copies of that physical notebook. I use the scannable app from the Evernote company on my iPhone to, take, to make PDF copies of paper documents. You could also take, um, use your camera app and just take a JPEG photo of um, your notes. In either regard, create a digital copy of your work so that the digital files can be stored in multiple backup locations. It's vital that you have a backup of all your scholarly work. I am not one to tell you how to take notes, what medium to use for your note taking. I'm faster at typing than I am at handwriting. So for me, typing in Evernote um, requires less time than handwriting notes. But sometimes I need to take uh, my tablet to a meeting because opening up a laptop computer at the conference table can be distracting to my colleagues. The same might, you might find the same uh, situation in your classroom, particularly if you're not sitting in traditional uh, rows and columns. If your classroom requires you to share a desk with um, one or more students. Sometimes it's a little easier to use a, a smaller recording device than a um, laptop. But whatever works for you, I encourage you to learn to use that method well. I have found Evernote to be indispensable to both my personal and my professional work. You might find using a different application to be equally valuable to you. Great, use that application. But just make sure you've got backup copies of all your work. I think I'll leave this video here and wish you 
the absolute best in academic note-taking. Bye for now.